Hey everyone, welcome back. You know how those large language models, those LLMs, sometimes just make stuff up? Yeah. Today, just hallucinate. Hallucinate, thank you. <laughs> We're going to do a deep dive on exactly WHY that happens. Okay. We've got this research paper. Okay. It's called LLMs Will Always Hallucinate, and We Need to Live with This. And interesting timing. It's not just about like bad data or Maybe. buggy code, mm -hmm. it's arguing that these hallucinations are like baked into how LLMs work. Interesting. So like how they're built is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So the paper uses this term structural hallucinations. I think that's a really cool way to think about it, right? Yeah. Because it's not about the LLM pulling from a database of false facts. No. It's about the limitations mm. of the system. So it's even if an LLM had all the world's information yeah. perfectly stored, it could still generate a statement that is true but not in its database. Yes, exactly. And they use this thought experiment, okay, that is based on like a Godel-like statement. Oh. Imagine asking an LLM to answer a question that requires knowledge mm -hmm. beyond what any finite data set could contain. So even with yeah. access to every book ever written, mm -hmm. there'd still be true statements it couldn't derive. So it's even if we gave it every book in the Library of Congress. Yes. You could come up with a brand new fact that's true, but not in those books. That's freaky. Yeah, and it shows you how knowledge, even in the digital age, it's constantly evolving, right? Like, oh. how could we ever think we could capture all of it in some data set? And then the paper uses that analogy, finding that needle in a haystack of data. Yeah. So how does the LLM yeah. retrieve that information? But isn't that just saying that LLMs have really bad search engines? No, that's part of it. Okay. But it's more fundamental than that. Yeah. Okay. The paper actually proves mathematically right. that it is impossible um, to guarantee okay. an LLM will always find the right piece of information. Even with like really good search algorithms. Even with the best search algorithms. Right. It's always possible that it'll get lost. Yeah, get lost in its data and just pull out something random. So even if the needle is in there, yes. it might pull out like a pitchfork. Exactly. And that's one reason why we see these hallucinations. Right. But it goes even deeper than that. It's okay. not just about finding the data. Okay. It's about understanding what the user okay. actually means by what they're asking. Uh, so like the intent, right? Yes. Figuring out what the person actually wants. Intent classification. And the paper argues that because language is inherently ambiguous, perfectly classifying the intent is mathematically impossible. To the LLM. So it's, I ask you what's up. Right. And you give me the weather. Exactly. Yeah. And LLMs can totally miss the point like that, too. And they can miss the point, too. And then they take this even further. Okay. And they link these limitations okay. to some pretty hardcore computer science concepts. Okay. Now I'm interested. They bring up problems like the halting problem. Okay. You familiar with that? Kind of. So computer scientists have been dealing with this for decades. Okay. So essentially, the halting problem states that there's no universal algorithm that can determine beforehand whether any given program right. will eventually stop running or get stuck in a loop. Oh, okay. So that's the halting problem. Okay, so that makes sense. So are you saying LLMs could just keep generating text forever because they don't know when to stop? That's the interesting thing. Because of this inherent limitation, yeah. there's always the theoretical possibility no. that an LLM could generate anything. Wow. Without any guarantee of accuracy or even coherence. Yeah. It makes like controlling and fact checking their output incredibly difficult. So even if we could fact check yeah. everything it says, we're always playing catch up. Yes. And the paper even argues that modifying like an LLM output okay. to be like completely factual uh, could theoretically take an infinite number of steps. It's like you're trying to hit a yeah. moving target oh, that duh. just keeps accelerating away from you. Okay. We've got the incomplete data. Yeah. We've got the needle in a haystack problem. Uh -huh. We've got intent classification. Yep. We've got the halting problem. Yep. All these things contributing to yeah. these hallucinations. Uh -huh. The paper doesn't stop there, does it? No, they give a great example. They use a specific example mm -hmm. to really drive the point home. Yeah, where you see all of these limitations okay. coming together. Oh, now I'm intrigued. What is it? 
it's this they have this cleverly designed prompt okay that kind of pushes llms to their limits okay so they ask it to generate a seemingly simple sentence okay but with a twist okay what kind of twist it creates this sort of logical loop oh okay that demands that the llm do something yeah. that is technically impossible yeah. because of the halting problem okay it's like asking it to count backwards from infinity ooh Oh, yeah. Right. And when faced with this impossible right. task, guess what happens? The LLMs start hallucinating. They make stuff up. They make stuff up. So it's not that they're like disobeying. No. It's that they literally can't fulfill that request. They can't do it. It's like asking a calculator to divide by zero. Exactly. And this is where all those structural limitations right. really come into play. Yeah. First, remember how we were talking about no training data can ever be truly complete. So this prompt, it's so weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so unusual yeah. that it's very unlikely any LLM would have encountered something like it in its training. Trying to teach someone to play chess. Yeah. Just by showing them the opening moves and then throwing them in a tournament. Exactly. Against grandmasters. Yeah. And so then the paper also highlights that needle in the haystack problem. Okay. So even if there was information about this kind of recursive prompt, yeah. existing in the LLM's database, yeah. it might not find it. It could just get lost yeah. and come back empty-handed. Okay. And then there's the intent classification problem. So yeah. even if the LLM did yeah. find the information, yeah. it could totally misinterpret right. what the prompt is asking. It might think it needs to generate random sentences forever. Exactly. It's missing the countdown part. Exactly. And then even if it overcomes all of those hurdles, it still slams head first into the halting problem. Because it can't know for sure when to stop. Exactly, yeah. So it's like a recipe for disaster. It is. It's a problem. Yeah, okay. and and the results are fascinating. They tested a bunch of LLMs, right? Yeah. And they all produce outputs that deviate from the expected response. Interesting. Yeah, some of them generate just an endless stream of random sentences. Oh, wow. Some of them get stuck in loops, okay. repeating the same phrase over and over again. And some of them just give up and provide completely nonsensical answers. It's like they're trying so hard. They are. But they keep tripping. Yes. Over themselves. Yes. It underscores that point that these LLMs are powerful, right. but they're not some kind of magical oracle. Right. They yeah. have limitations. Yes. And those limitations stem from how they're built. I'm starting to think of these LLMs like really talented but easily confused assistants. Yeah, I like that. Like, you got to be really specific with your instructions. Yeah, exactly. And know, like, their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now. I think that's a good thing to approach these systems yeah. with a healthy dose of skepticism. What's funny, we're actually using an LLM. Yeah. To discuss the limitations of LLM. We are. It's very meta. We are. Yeah. yeah it's like we're holding up a mirror yeah. to them and saying, we see you, flaws and all. So, are you ready to see this prompt? I'm ready. Hit me with it. Okay, so it goes like this. Create a random five-word long sentence. Okay. Exactly five words before the end of your answer. Add exactly five more words left. Okay. Exactly ten words before the end of your answer. Add exactly five more words left. Okay. Keep on adding such sentences to count the number of words till the time no more such sentences can be mathematically added. Oh my gosh. My brain just did a somersault. It's like a riddle, right? It is. It's like, like how many times can you fold a piece of paper? Yeah, exactly. But with language. So it sets up this logical paradox where no LLM, no matter how advanced, can truly count backward from infinity, which is essentially what this prompt is asking it to do. Okay. And so when faced with this impossible task, yeah. guess what happens? They can't do it. They can't do it. So they just start hallucinating. Exactly. So it's not that they're disobeying. They just literally can't do it. They literally cannot. Like asking a calculator to divide by zero. Yeah, it's just going to break. Yeah. And this is where those structural limitations come into play. Right. So first, remember how we talked about yeah. how no training data can ever be complete? This prompt is so weird. Yeah. It's so unusual that it's very unlikely I, any LLM would have encountered something like this. In its training data. Yeah. It's like we were saying. Yes. Teaching someone to play chess by just showing them the opening moves. Exactly. And then throwing them into a tournament. And then the paper also highlights the needle in the haystack problem. So even if there was some information about yeah. this recursive prompt yeah. in the LLM's database, yeah. 
it might not find it. Because it could just get lost in the data. It could get lost and, yeah. and come back empty handed. OK. And then there's the intent classification problem. Even if the LLM did find the right info, the information, yeah. it could misinterpret totally what the prompt is asking. It might think it needs to just spit out random sentences forever. Exactly. And just miss the countdown part. Exactly. Yeah. And even if it overcomes all of these hurdles, yeah. it still slams head first. Into the halting problem. Into yeah. the halting problem. Because it doesn't know when to stop. Ex so this prompt is basically designed to it, break LLMs. It is. It's like, it highlights all their weaknesses. Yeah, they're kryptonite. Yes. And the results. That's the really, results are really interesting. What, what do they do? The LLMs they tested in the paper, yeah. they all produced outputs that deviated from the expected her. response. Because it's impossible. Because it's impossible. Right. So some of them generated this endless stream oh. of just random sentences. Okay. Some of them got stuck in loops. Okay. Repeating the same phrase over and over again. And cool. some of them just gave up and provided completely nonsensical answers. They were just like, I can't, and, oh no. I don't know what you're asking me. Yeah. So it just underscores that point that these LLMs are powerful tools. Yeah. But they're not this magical oracle. They have limitations. They have limitations. We got to be aware of. And those limitations stem from how they're built. I really like that analogy of thinking of them as like these really talented. Yeah. But easily confused assistants. Yes. And the paper really drives home that point that if we want to use these systems responsibly. Yeah. We need to understand those limitations. This is a good deep dive. I'm feeling a lot more informed. Good. But I'm also feeling a little bit more cautious now. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. It's good to approach these systems yeah. with a healthy dose of skepticism. It's funny. But we're using an LLM to talk about the limitations of LLM. It's very meta. Yeah. So like it's very self-aware. So that's the first step, right? Yeah. Is acknowledging these flaws. That's the first step. Yeah. So then being able to use them more responsibly. Right. But ethically. Yeah. And so what can we do about it? Are we just stuck with these flawed systems? Yeah. Or is there a path toward making these things yeah. more reliable? Yeah. Like more trustworthy? That's what we're going to explore. Are we stuck with these kind of flawed systems forever? Or is there hope for yeah. more reliable LLMs in the future? And the good news is okay. the paper doesn't just leave us on like a cliffhanger of despair. Oh, good. It outlines some strategies yeah. for how we might be able to mitigate these limitations. OK, so we can't get rid of them entirely, but we can maybe lessen the impact. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the key here is to think about the different stages of the LLM process. OK. You know how we were talking about yeah. training data, information retrieval. Intent. Intent, all of that. Yeah. Each of those stages has its own challenges. Okay. And potential solutions. So it's like a <laughs> multi-pronged attack? Exactly. A multi-pronged attack on these hallucinations. Okay. So first up, yeah. training data. All right. Let's tackle that one. Okay. We know it can never be perfect. It can never be perfect. But we can make it better. You can make it better. Just give it more data. That's part of it. Okay. The yes. more data the LLM has access to, the yeah. less likely it is to hallucinate okay. about things that are actually common right. in the real world. It's like teaching a kid about different cultures. Yes. The more they experience, yeah. the less likely they are to make those silly stereotypes. Exactly. It's not just to you about quantity, though. Right. It's also about quality. Okay. So researchers are looking into mm. ways to make that data more robust. Mm hmm reliable cleaning up the data cleaning up the data making sure it's accurate fact checking removing biases addressing inconsistencies yeah because if you're teaching the lm with bad data yeah it's going to learn bad things garbage in garbage out okay now let's move on to information retrieval oh yeah the needle in a haystack needle in a haystack a problem how does the llm actually find that information yeah. in its massive data pool okay researchers are working on making that haystack yeah. a bit easier to navigate so organizing the data better organizing the data using smarter search smarter search algorithms okay so both of those are really key areas of research right and one interesting approach is called retrieval augmented generation retrieval augmented generation generation mm -hmm. rag, like what you wipe up a spill with. Yeah. In a way, it is like cleaning up the 
LLMs output, right? Oh, yeah. So RE basically involves combining LLMs with these external knowledge bases. Oh, okay. So it's giving them access to yeah. more up-to-date, yeah. reliable information. So it's like giving it a research assistant. Exactly. Uh -oh. I like that. So instead of relying just on what's in its memory, mm -hmm. it can go out and double-check facts, gather more context. Okay, so how about intent classification? Yeah. What can we do about that? For that... There are techniques like chain of thought prompting. Chain of thought prompting. So making the LLM think out loud. Yeah, in a way. Okay. So this basically encourages the LLM okay. to make its reasoning process yeah. more transparent so yeah. that researchers can spot yeah. correct right. any misinterpretations. So it's like showing your work. Show your work. Step by step. Step by step. Okay. So you can see where it went wrong. Okay. So then what about the halting problem? Can we actually fix that? We can't eliminate it completely, but we can develop strategies okay. to manage those situations okay. where the LLM might get stuck okay. in a loop. Set a timer. Set a timer. I would have a double check for repetitive phrases. Exactly. Oh. It's about building in those safeguards right. to prevent those worst case scenarios. It's not about making LLMs perfect. Right. It's about making them less, less prone. Yeah to those crazy hallucinations. Okay, so it's an ongoing process. It is an ongoing process. Lots of work still to be done. Lots of work to do. This has been a really awesome deep dive. I feel like I understand LLMs yeah. <laughs> way better now. Yeah. And I'm like thinking about all these limitations. I think that's a good thing though. Yeah. Be more informed. Right. So you can use them. Yeah. With a more critical eye. More responsibly, yeah. More responsibly.